All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I guess you can hear me. At least so I hope. Um, thank you very much for making into the SPI room uh, this early before lunch. If you made it in here, uh, it probably says a couple of things. It, it probably shows that uh, you're not very much into air quality and uh, prediction models and stuff like that. So, uh, so uh, in that sense, welcome. Because the sessions we are going to have, the the current one and the next one, are going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to be Vicky to kick it off, and uh, uh, Vicky will be an uh, let's call it unorthodox speaker at a, at a conference like PyCon because she studied economics and business at the University of Glasgow, later at, at, at King's College in London. Then she then she did what's called people operations. Well, she'll, she'll tell you all about it, but like, so uh, she, she did what's called people operations and, and, and basically basically recruitment, hiring at, at, uh, at uh, startups and effectively at Google uh, as well. And somehow, and somehow she made it to, to this thing called Slido, which is known for this uh, Orava style green. So, uh, with uh, without further ado, uh, let's give it up for Vicky, who will tell us all about her summer. Thank you for that intro, Mark. And it seems like I could actually skip the introduction, but, but I will not. I will go with the flow. Uh, so I am here today on behalf of Slido, and together with me there are about uh, 300 people. Uh, at Slido, and few of them are in this room as well, and to their disadvantage, they are wearing Slido t-shirts, so in case you would like to approach them and maybe ask a few questions, they have plenty of funny anecdotes, but might also tell you a little bit more juicy stuff around data or engineering. Uh, I would recommend to do so. Uh, but to sort of uh, kick off, maybe I would be a little bit curious to know uh, why you came here uh, today. Uh, is it because you're not into airflow? Uh, raise your hand if that's the case, or maybe you confuse the schedule. Yeah, there, there's a, a few of you, so um, I, I'll consider that my success. Uh, but let's continue with that. So uh, raise your hand if you have been to a presentation by a former HR person in the past and you actually learned something about technology or, or programming. So, so there's one, and, and it's Dano, so I know he's, uh, he's lying because he's from Slido. Um, so that's exactly what I, what I expected, and I will make no promises, but I do hope that this will change for at least some of you by the end of the presentation. Uh, so let's get uh, through it. Uh, so you would have seen Slido, I'm guessing, at least here at PyCon. We do have a beautiful Q&A function, but there's also other functions like polls and live quizzes uh, that can make your meeting more fun and, uh, and, and interactive. Uh, but they also do bring a lot of trust and transparency into companies through open Q&As and, and, uh, and, and, and so on. So uh, do explore it if you can. And I did have to say this, so uh, my, my company is happy. Uh, but let's turn the attention back to myself. So my name is Vicky, as you already know, and I do have background in recruitment, as, as Marek mentioned, so I worked in a talent acquisition for about five years across different companies, mostly startups and sort of scales ups. Uh, and that basically means that I probably messaged every single one of you in this room. Uh, no one replied, thank you very much. Uh, that's also, also the reason why I'm no longer uh, in recruitment and I'm doing something that is called product and technology operations manager. Yeah, you're probably thinking, what the heck is that? Well, it's a pretty rare species in the, in the industry at the moment. But basically, I work on uh, different projects across technology and product, like standardization of, of how our product team should work or finding the best practices. Uh, but also going to things like conferences and meetups, so stuff like uh, PyCon, actually. And, and here's a few pictures from our recent trip to Budapest, which was uh, a lot of fun. And I also facilitate uh, our company meetings, uh, like uh, show and tells and, uh, and, and hackathon. So you could say that I do many things around uh, sort of enablement uh, and, uh, and, and, and advocacy and overall satisfaction of our product and, uh, and technology teams. So that would be a little bit about me. Uh, but you are probably asking, why am I giving this talk today? There must be engineers at Slido that would have something interesting to say. And yeah, it's definitely a question that, uh, that I, I've asked myself. And it does have something to do with, uh, with this man. Yes, you would have seen him <laughs> on stage already. Uh, so let me introduce you uh, to Marek. So Marek is actually our head of data and, and research uh, here at Slido. And this, tr this picture was taken at uh, our conference trip in, in Budapest. And you can see that Marek was 
definitely only buying, okay, this doesn't work, uh, only buying the essential things that you need for a successful uh, booth there. Uh, and Marek said this um, pretty interesting thing while we were in Budapest. So he went to me and he, and he said, Vicky, I think this summer we ought to make you a, a technical person, or, or at least somehow technical person. Um, and the, the reason for this might have been multiple. Uh, one thing probably I'm sort of known to have a high pain tolerance. I can put my head down and I can grind and, and keep going if, if needed. But he also definitely thought that there were some rooms for, um, uh, for uh, let's say, optimization of my efficiency or, or automation in terms of the projects that I was doing. And, and, uh, but technical upskilling was definitely needed for that. Um, and me being a yes person or a yes man, uh, I was very excited about this, and what was really nice, uh, Marek actually offered to help. So this is basically how uh, my summer with the command line started, and today's story is going to be uh, about what we did uh, to try to upskill me, how it went from my side, so I'll share a few confessions or personal notes of mine, and then also I'll try to share a few takeaways that I thought that could be relevant to you guys. So let's go through it. Uh, the first one, so we did call this project, you, for every project you need a name, right? So this project was called Wiki Summer with a Common Line, and it did have three uh, integral parts uh, that we decided with Marek. The first one uh, was taking a master class that uh, Marek actually teaches not very far from here. I don't know which way is Matvis, but about 50 meters one direction. So it is being taught there, and apparently it's also the reason why the course at Matvis, the five-year course takes about seven. So I, I need to take that. Um, then, uh, then we were also going to do some work-related projects to help me build on my skills and apply the knowledge that I learned. And the third thing that was really important or was integral uh, was having access to uh, a few approachable engineers uh, at Slido that could help me answer questions and, and, and make sure I'm not getting constantly stuck. So we'll go through uh, each of them. So starting with uh, the master course, um, I was hoping to share well, I'm not sure. Yeah, oh, it sort of worked. Yeah, so basically this is a screenshot of when Marek was uh, advertising the course um, to Slido, because this course was open to everyone at Slido and there were no prerequisites. But Marek uh, managed the expectations really well. So you might not be able to see it, but in terms of what to expect. So definitely frustration, definitely confusion, blood, tears, and granishing of teeth, so grinding of teeth. So you knew it was going to be fun if, if you enjoyed that, basically. Um, but, but he did say it was going to be a zero to hero immersion into what command line is, so zero to hero course. Um, and uh, yeah, so expectation management. Well, it was advertised to everyone, no prerequisites, so you didn't have to be in a technical role uh, whatsoever. And the format was it took about two weeks. It was two hours of daily lectures and coursework uh, done together uh, with a few teaching assistants uh, so they can help you with the lab work, maybe one-to-one -one or, or one-to-one. -one. Uh, and, and that was really handy. And in terms of the focus, of the actual lecture, so it was an overall introduction into Unix and Linux operating system. Things like navigating uh, files and directories, so changing files, create, uh, creating, deleting them. Uh, also using some most commonly known uh, commands, but also a few comments that might be worth of bragging rights in the engineering community for the fun of it, right? Uh, and text processing and editing and then Vim and, uh, and, and batch scripting. And I will come back to Vim uh, towards the end of the presentation because that was actually a, a lot of fun. Where is my... Um, yeah, I see some love. Perfect. And in case you were interested in the curriculum, it is a public course, so just do come to Marek and then he'll be able to share the details if you would like to uh, learn more about it in the future. Uh, but let's see what was the result. So uh, out of about 300 people that we have at Slido, 40 people expressed interest, which is which is pretty big number. I think that was more than I'm assuming Marek uh, expected. But only eight people finished it from beginning until the end, so it does speak about how difficult it was. And there were only two people that were already not in a technical role, so not engineers, not data analysts, or not testers. And I was one of the two, and, and I, I really had to finish it, right? <laughs> Didn't really have a choice. So it does speak about how difficult it was. 
Um, and but in terms of the feedback, so people did say that it was a great intro into um, uh, into the usage of terminal and operations of basic commands. Uh, but what I would swear by, especially the last statement, I think mostly applies to someone like me. Um, so it did. I did learn a lot about my computer's capability, which I just wasn't aware of before, and that was uh, that was really cool. Uh, but people also said that there was a, there it was a lot of content to get through basically, um, and that's probably another reason why people did feel uh, they, they did keep keep on quitting each lecture. Uh, and in terms of my ter personal takeaway, so this will be sort of the first, uh, let's say, the first confession of this presentation. Well, the expectations were managed well and, and were quite low in this sense, so I, I knew it was going to be hard. I knew I was going to sh shed a tear potentially. But there was actually more coding than actual frustration or more coding than I expected, and, and that was sort of cool. I also felt like, well, now I know how my computer operates, or at least sort of I feel like I know. Um, also, that server thing I asked about in the very first lecture, like what the heck is actually a server? I know I heard it, but I can't describe. Uh, I know what it is now, and I definitely know how to connect to it, so I already thought, thought that was a success. Um, and also that command line stuff, well, doesn't always work, at least not for me. But when it does, it, it does feel pretty great, and it's sort of fun as well. And uh, Stack Overflow and GitHub were not new to me, but I always use them for hiring purposes, for basically look for you guys. But it was really nice to use them for, the, for what they were originally meant for, and I was starting to feel like an engineer, you know? Um, and uh, last but not least, so it did give me some grounds to build on, and, and that was great. So let's go through the second part. So now we're getting to the to the projects that we worked on afterwards. Uh, so what were they? Um, the first one was a scraping project, and uh, it was about a company directory. I'm not sure how familiar you are with company directories, and I do hope there's no uh, confidential information on that slide. Oopsie. Um, but basically, we were acquired by Cisco about a year ago. Cisco is a very large organization, 80,000 people. Uh, there's many different engineering team dispersed. Um, uh, you can, it's, it's basically something that doesn't fit on, on an org chart. But in an organization like this, it is pretty important that you have friends who can tell you how you actually operate, because there's a lot of stuff like written on paper, but things work sort of differently. Uh, and, it's, and it's good if, if you know people around who can actually tell you how to, how to work and potentially how to get around. Um, and it was very, so I tried to actually take a screenshot of part of the directory, but this is not even all the engineering teams that are there. And you can see there's plenty of like other direct deports direct reports that have other direct reports as well. So basically a lot of a lot of people and it's very difficult to find someone. So if you wanted to find me, like I'm somewhere here, there's no way that you would be able to find me from the from the first uh, from the first picture. Yeah. So I'm I'm over there under under our director and, and, and head of engineering. Um, yeah. So basically we wanted to scrape the directory. To, able to, to be able to find easier relevant teams that we could partner with for any um, research projects or maybe speaker engagements. We do run um, internal conferences and, and, and so on. So, so, so that, was the, that was sort of the, the context or the, the problem that we were having and we were trying to solve. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So, so what did actually happen or what did I actually uh, what did I actually do here? Uh, well, I knew there was an existing script uh, from a different scraping project that we were doing at Slido, and I, I did have access to, access to it through my GitHub account. Uh, and I did, uh, so I, I looked up the script, and I could see, so there's, uh, um, there's uh, uh, the source of the website. I see some criteria there, and then I see where the, the output is defined. So I was really just trying to understand how it was built, and I knew I needed to change these parameters and adjust it to, to our project. Uh, in order for it to work, or at least that's what that's what I felt. So so that's what I did. I made the, the changes, and I will also highlight what they were afterwards. So I committed my changes in, in your vocab, right? Uh, and I got them reviewed and merged in, which uh, yeah felt felt pretty cool. Um, and in terms of how this was executed, so the beauty of this project it was really simple actually. It was executed in the total of two commands from terminal, which I was most familiar with, and the first one was just installing pipenv, which uh, well to me basically just does magic, but I know it sets up your virtual environment for you. I've Googled it many times. Uh, and, and then you basically just, uh, just run the script. And, and then you can also see the, the changes that I was committing there. So this was a pretty simple project to, to get me started. But let's see, uh, let's see those uh, confessions of mine. Well, the first one. This all sounds great, but guys, I was really, really slow. Like, I don't think 
even Mr. Sure, well, Marek realized uh, how, how slow a fee ca ca some things would take. Like, for example, setting up my GitHub account that I can actually run things from terminal. Like, I had to spend a little bit of time on documentation and, and, and get it done, and, and it took some time. So I was really slow, and when I was looking at people around me, well, I was just nowhere near. Um, then I also realized, well, those scripts are, are written in Python, right? That was not part of the, the course that we did, and I, I know very little about Python, so maybe that was a nod for the future. That's, that's something that I could look, look into if I want to continue in this way. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, yeah. I did mention I sort of felt like an engineer, but I acknowledge that editing scripts is probably not the same as writing them from scratch, so again, not for the future, not there yet. Um, and uh, yeah, I mentioned this, I looked at Pippin many times, as I mentioned, to me it just does magic and, and that's, what, uh, that, that's how I will continue un to understand it. But if you are not using it just yet, it's very relevant in the Python world, at least that's what I understand, you should look it up. Um, so let's go on to the next project, and this one uh, was about automating slide duplications. So, so to share context why this was relevant to me personally, um, so I run our weekly show and tells meetings, which is uh, a product meeting where each product team presents what they've been up to for the past um, uh, week or so. Um, and what does this, this what does this mean for me? Basically, each week on Monday, I take a template of uh, a presentation, I duplicate it, I edit the agenda, I edit few slides maybe I delete something, maybe I add something, I share it with the team, and I basically repeat the same process in a week, right? Um, it doesn't take an awful lot of time, but you do have to think about it, um, and, uh, and it definitely is something that could be automated, right? So we decided that uh, this would be uh, my next project. So let's see uh, what did we do here. Uh, well, this was a little bit more complex, and I will not lie, more driven by Marek, but we did build an application written in Python which was automatically duplicating and editing uh, any Google Slides um, uh, presentations, basically, and it was again run through Terminal. And it did support comments like, for example, delete a particular slide which had an ID there, and it was rendered through Jinja templates, which I'm assuming that many of you are uh, familiar with as well. And in terms of the executing command, so it was again pretty uh, quite simple. It was running run through pipent. So uh, you run the name of the uh, the file. So we call this PTSD because prep the slides up. That's the name I came up with. Yes, I'm creative. Um, and <laughs> then you add the JSON file that contains the credentials, presentation ID, which here was set for this presentation, then the command we want to run, and the ID of the particular presentation. And again, run through uh, per terminal. So. Uh, not too bad to in terms of execution. Um, and it did have some custom features uh, like automatic date and time formatting through STRF time, uh, which um, again, some of you will probably know, but I bet there's at least one person who didn't, so you learned something, I hope. <laughs> uh, and what it does, well, basically it adjusts the time uh, based on, uh, on how you set it or based on the actual. So you can set it for today, it will always be today when you run it or a couple of days before or after. So in this case, it would render the, uh, the, the, mm, to, 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 the, to the 10th of September. Uh, so that's that, but let's go through uh, the personal notes of mine again. Well, uh, at this point, this was a little bit more context, uh, complex, and I did start to Google things in incognito mode because I was a tiny bit ashamed of my search history, and I thought someone else would see it, and uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I also am constantly reminded of my slowness at, at this point. Um, but on the other hand, the Python syntax is making a little bit more sense, so there is, there is something positive there, right? Um, and uh, we're also thinking, or the prep, prep the slides up could be a pretty good open source project, so maybe in the future, future you guys can just uh, easily duplicate it and use it for your own presentations, and um, yeah. And then there was this thing, so, uh, uh -huh, yeah. So I was going to actually do uh, this presentation in in Vim at some point as well because we did have Vim as part of the uh, as part of the the lecture and I really liked Vim um, and it was going to look something like this but guys Vim does not support pictures and I'm not doing a presentation with uh, with no pictures uh, I'm really sorry but maybe that's something that uh, your community can fix by the next uh, PyCon and then I can uh, I can do the full presentation in Vim. Let's go back, there we go, perfect. 
Perfect. Uh, so we are getting to the uh, final portion of the presentation, and there's a couple of uh, things we need to answer and a couple of takeaways that I would like to address as well. So let's start with the, the obvious one. So was this all worth it? Was this project, uh, Vicky's summer with the command line, was it even successful? Well, it probably depends, right? Because did I become a full stack engineer in the last, well, actually less than two months? No, <laughs> I did not. Do I want to become a full stack engineer? No. <laughs> On the other hand, did I learn some things uh, that were really useful for my role and, and, and thoroughly enjoy them as well? Hell yes. And I'm, I'm really, really excited about the projects that we were able to deliver. And I'm even more so excited about the ones that we can tackle in the future. I do see that there's still so many things that uh, I, I, can, I can barely touch, and, and I would like to work on that. So I'm indeed very excited for my learning journey, and it will not stop here. Uh, but there are a couple of uh, takeaways, or maybe food for, food for thought, I would like to leave with you as well. So firstly, maybe starting with people who are, who are young professionals or maybe leadership at companies. Um, so if I, if I, from my experience, the, the biggest amount of um, sort of opportunities for easy automations are actually in non-technical teams and they're not too complex and those tend to be projects that engineers don't have time for. And maybe by investing or by running similar initiatives like the one that Marek was running at Slido, you can help the teams to become more efficient and the people also will be really thankful for it uh, and it can actually pay back and increase retention and, and things like engagement. So I would highly recommend uh, uh, doing something similar or at least supporting the people who are interested in upskilling in, in this sense. The next one, so call for engineers. I'm assuming that that's probably the, the majority of the audience here. Well, if there's one thing I learned this summer, it's definitely that programming is really, really tough, and I have so much respect for all of you. But imagine, imagine how tough it is for someone who was not naturally inclined in this direction and maybe doesn't possess the right talents as well. Um, and there is a reason why so many people at Slido actually dropped off. It's because they were scared to ask certain questions, because it was quite, they probably felt insecure at times, and, and it was hard, right? And uh, I would not be able to go through what I did if I wasn't surrounded by uh, many approachable people and people like Marek. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. And you do have the opportunity to be the difference makers on, on someone else's journey. So just keep that in mind and, and try to be approachable. I'm not saying you aren't, uh, but maybe even more so. And I also believe it will actually pay back, uh, pay back to you because it might free up some capacity uh, for you by outsourcing tasks that are not as technically interesting and can be done by someone a little bit less skilled and you will have more, hopefully more capacity on, on projects that you're actually excited about and then that are a little bit more challenging. Uh, and the very last one, I'm not assuming that there's people uh, as, as little technically skilled as, as myself here, but if you are there, uh, I would just like to encourage you uh, to do something similar, because I do believe that uh, it is probably the best skills that you can pick up if you are looking to grow or if you're looking to just challenge yourself or maybe impress your boss and ask for promotion. Um, uh, then, uh, yeah, and my boss is sitting right over there, so he knows that's coming. Um, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. This is all for my uh, for me today. And I do promise there's some actual engineers at the Slido booth. So please do come there. We also have plenty of uh, uh, chocolates and, and other things. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Vicky, for your presentation. Wherever you heard the name Marek, feel free to negate the, the statement. It's basically all lies. Uh, and with that, we can go through the, uh, we can go through the, through the Q&A. We have a couple, couple of minutes at least. So the most uploaded thing that we have in here, um, what will be the next programming project for you, Vicky? <laughs> or will it end this summer? So prep the slice up is not done as an open source just yet, and I think we would like to make that happen, so that's one. Uh, but also, so we were talking about some uh, engineering leadership dashboards, but uh, I, I do need to <laughs> build some ground on SQL for that as well, but, I, uh, but that's something that I, I, I'm really excited about, and I know I would like to uh, look into that direction, so, so that would be another one. Awesome. I, I, I guess I could, I don't know, check them out at some point or something. 
Uh, cool. Um, the uh, the next one we have is more of a personal nature. So what about it, Sweden? The Sweden tears comments. Did that even happen, or or maybe not? Was it all just posturing? I mean, do I want to admit? Um, <laughs> um, uh, they definitely happen. I'll just uh, <laughs> I'll just put it there. Um, yeah, yeah. No, they definitely happen at least for me. Yeah. I guess I should say Wiki does CrossFit, so what what Sweden tears are you talking about, you know, when it comes to uh closing Vim. And and in that regard, uh we have a question on that. Uh um so uh how long did it take you to for you to sort of exit Vim for the first time? Um and we'll take the next question afterwards. Um so I, I've seen the memes, so I'm aware <laughs> of, of Vim. Uh, but to be honest, I think it was pretty smooth. But that's again because uh, I think uh, Marek was uh, Marek gave us instructions. So uh, WQ, I know. <laughs> I mean, I I mean, I, I guess this is a question for me. It's the first thing we teach on 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 Vim. How do you close it? Because then you then you become a meme on the on the internet. Well, uh, I, I'm not sure. Does the does the audience have any question in here? Like, is someone brave enough to pick a mic? Yeah, I'll, I'll run. Uh, I have one question. What would your advice to engineers who want uh, to help their teammates to become like productive with common command line be uh, like where well, the things that uh, they failed to explain to you and then at some point it clicked? sort of, and uh, you would like uh, to share such things? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Um, I mean, there's many things that need to click. There's a lot to be learned. So I don't think there's just one, there, there, there isn't one way of explaining that we work for everything. But I think it's more the attitude, just be patient um, and be reassuring and, and make them feel comfortable uh, and, 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 and sure that, that, that you believe that they have what it takes. Because I, th I think there is a notion among people like myself that like, engineering is reserved just for some, like for some minds that have what it takes and maybe not the rest. So just make them feel. And I think what, made, what really helped me was that Marek made me sure that no, I did have what it takes and it, it could be taught. It's not just reserved for a few. So, so do the same and, and, and be patient. All right. I guess I guess that's us for the for, for this session. Um, the next one should be starting in about in about five minutes. In the meantime, you can go check out the slider booth and get some chocolates there. We can do that too for sure. If if uh, that's the game in here. But uh, in the meantime, please give it up for Vicky and for the talk. Mikrobit je programovateľný milý počítač, ktorý ti dovolí prepojiť informatiku s kreativitou. Dá sa programovať veľmi jednoducho a ovládať tak, aby robil presne to, čo chceš. O pár minút sme zvládli rozsvietiť vlastný obrázok na displeji a o chvíľu sme už obrázky diálkovo prepínali druhým mikrobitom. Mikrobit má v sebe aj super vychytávky, ako sú tlačidlá, senzor pohybu, kompas a teplomer. K mikrobitu ale môžeš pripojiť množstvo ďalších vecí. Tu programujeme, aká animácia sa nám má ukázať na LED pásiku. Ja som na ňom naprogramovala dúhu. Teraz programujeme podľa nôd kohútika Jarabého. Najlepšie na mikrobite je, že si viem vytvoriť napríklad blikajúceho robota alebo gitaru, ktorú ovládam tak, že ňou zatraciem, 
alebo futbalovú bránku, kde mi mikrobit počíta, koľko gólov som dala, alebo kúlové svietiace topánky a tisíc ďalších vecí, ktoré ešte len vymyslím. Mikrobit je hračka, ktorú schováš do dlane a vytvoríš z nej čokoľvek. Tak čo s ňou spravíš ty? Každých 60 sekúnd si 28 tisíc ľudí predplatí službu Netflix. Odošle sa 197 miliónov e-mailov, stiahne sa 414 tisíc aplikácií a ukradne niekoľko tisíc hesiel. Na internete sa toho deje veľa. A všetko najdôležitejšie sa dozviete na Živé SK. Živé SK. Technológie ľudskou rečou.